Legend has it that there was a great warrior with outstanding martial arts skills. He traveled all over the world to find a worthy opponent. Countless challengers attempted to beat him, yet not a single one could lay a finger on him. No matter the number of enemies he encountered, none proved to be a match for his powers. Even the most courageous heroes of China, the Furious Five, humbly bowed in respect to this master. But, hold on, it's just a dream of Po Panda's. Po has a deep passion for Kung Fu, and he idealizes the students of the Jade Palace. His room is adorned with posters and dolls of the Furious Five, heroes he holds in high esteem. His father is Mr. Ping, a goose who runs a traditional noodle shop. He envisions Po taking over the family business one day. Despite his lack of interest in noodles and his passion for Kung Fu, Po hesitates to confess his true feelings to his father. His eyes fixate hopelessly on the Jade Palace nestled in the valley. There, Master Shurfu and his students, Tigress, Monkey, Viper, Crane, and Mantis, live out the very dreams that Po nurtures. They dedicate their days to Kung Fu practice, ensuring the safety of the valley. One day, Master Shurfu receives a summons from his teacher, Master Ugwei. Ugwei shares a troubling vision. Their former foe, Tai Lung, is making a return to the valley. The mere thought of the chaos Tai Lung could unleash sends shivers down Shifu's spine. Urgently, he directs his servant, Zeng, to fly to the prison and alert the guards to heighten security. To counter the impending threat, Master Ugwe decides to choose a dragon warrior. He will be bestowed with the dragon scroll containing limitless power. Only a worthy warrior can be entrusted with such a responsibility. News quickly spread across the valley that Uwe would announce the dragon warrior from Master Shurfu's five students. Po, well versed in Kung Fu history, understands the gravity of the situation. Bursting with excitement, he urges every customer to head to the Jade Palace to witness the selection of the dragon warrior. Eager to witness the historic event, Po desires to join everyone at the Jade Palace. However, his father assigns him the responsibility of the noodle cart. This turns out to be a burden for him that leaves him exhausted. Determined to overcome the obstacle, he decides to abandon the cart and make his way to the palace. Meanwhile, the Jade Palace is full of civilians. Before Po can enter, the doors get shut. He finds himself locked out, missing the Furious Five's performance. Desperate to enter, he tries using a bamboo stick as a makeshift lever. Unfortunately, his weight proves too much for the fragile stick. Next, he ties a rope to a tree, attempting to catapult himself inside. Yet, his calculations go wrong and he ends up falling short of entering the palace. While the Furious Five showcase their kung fu prowess, Master Ugwe relies on his senses to identify the dragon warrior. Outside, Po cleverly crafts a makeshift rocket chair using fireworks. His first attempt fails as he collides with palace walls. However, soon after, he lands in the midst of the palace. As he opens his eyes, he is greeted by the sight of Master Ugwe pointing directly at him. A hushed silence falls over the crowd, as Master Uwe proclaims Po to be the Dragon Warrior. It sends shockwaves through everyone. Stunned, Master Shurfu attempts to persuade Uwe that it's a mistake. However, Uwe stands firm in his decision. On the other hand, Zing rushes to the prison to alert Officer Reno about the need for heightened security. However, the officer takes offense at the implication. He leads Zing to a bridge, where a feather gets plucked from Zing and falls. Unbeknownst to them, it lands perilously close to the chasm, where Tai Lung is chained. Meanwhile, Master Shurfu confronts Po, still boiling over his unexpected selection. Holding Po's finger, he threatens the Wuxi finger attack. He assures Po that by the end of his training, he'll wish he hadn't been chosen as the Dragon Warrior. Later, Shurfu brings Po to the training hall and instructs him to showcase his moves. Unfamiliar with even the basics of Kung Fu, Po clumsily stumbles through the room. He collides with every training prop and ends up injured. His clumsy attempts draw mockery from the other students, leaving him disheartened. As night falls, Tigress advises Po to leave, asserting he doesn't belong. Feeling the weight of rejection, Po seeks comfort in consuming numerous peaches. Near a peach tree, Master Ugwe approaches him, offering words of wisdom. Ugwe encourages Po to let go of the past and future, emphasizing the importance of living in the present and giving his best. Meanwhile, Tai Lung exploits the fallen feather to free himself from his chains. In response, the prison officer commands an attack, with guards throwing spears at him. A well-aimed spear shatters one of Tai Lung's hand chains, granting him partial freedom. He then breaks the second chain and ingeniously uses the spears to create a makeshift stairway, ascending to the top. Engaging the guards in combat, 
he fights his way through. In a desperate attempt to stop his escape, the prison officer shoots an arrow at stalactites, causing them to crash onto the only bridge leading out. Despite the bridge's destruction, Tai Lung manages to reach the other side. Employing a bomb, he demolishes the prison's front door and clears his exit. Grabbing Zing by the neck, he forces him to inform Master Shurfu of his impending arrival. The next day, Master Shurfu enters Po's room, relieved to find it empty. However, their relief is short-lived as they discover Po diligently practicing Kung Fu. Keen to accelerate Po's departure, Master Shurfu directs his students to engage in matches with him. Each student poses a tough challenge, pushing Po to his limits. Not to be outdone, Master Shurfu himself contributes, delivering a powerful demonstration of Kung Fu that includes tossing Po down an unending flight of stairs. Viper and Mantis lend a helping hand to Po, utilizing acupuncture techniques to aid in his recovery. As they work on him, they share insights about Master Shurfu's past. They reveal that Shurfu was once kind and cheerful, and smiled more often. Tigress picks up the narrative, recounting how Master Shurfu discovered Tai Lung as a baby left on the Jade Palace doorstep. Shurfu took him in, raising and teaching him Kung Fu as if he were his own son. Growing older and more skilled, Tai Lung believed himself worthy of the Dragon Scroll. However, when Master Ugwe rejected him as the Dragon Warrior, Tai Lung's anger surfaced. Fueled by rage, he sought to seize the Dragon Scroll by force. Torn by Tai Lung's descent into darkness, Master Shurfu tried to stop him, but the memory of Tai Lung's innocent baby face held him back. In the end, it was Master Ugwe who used his powers to subdue Tai Lung. Since that tragic incident, Master Shurfu has carried the weight of losing Tai Lung to the darkness. He never smiled again. In the quiet of the night, Master Shurfu meditates until Zing interrupts with urgent news of Tai Lung's return. Alarmed, Shurfu rushes to Master Ugwe, conveying the imminent threat. Ugwe, however, advises Shurfu to place his trust in Po. Sensing the end of his journey, Ugwe hands Shurfu his staff. In a breathtaking display, he ascends into the heavens in a swirling cloud of peach blossoms. Master Shurfu wastes no time and quickly approaches Po, urgently informing him about the impending danger posed by Tai Lung. However, Po believes he's not capable of facing Tai Lung, and suggests that Master Ugwe can handle the situation as he did before. With a heavy heart, Shurfu discloses Ugwe's departure, and emphasizes that Po is their only hope. In a moment of panic, Po attempts to flee from the palace. However, Master Shurfu intercepts him. Shurfu implores Po to trust in his master, just as he himself has come to trust in Ugwe. Po remains skeptical, convinced that Shurfu can't transform him into a dragon warrior in a matter of days. Witnessing her master's distress, Tigress takes matters into her own hands. She decides to confront Tai Lung alone. Inspired by her courage, the other students rally behind her. They believe that Master Shurfu had trained them precisely for this moment. The next day, Master Shurfu stumbles upon Po in the pantry, attempting to reach for some cookies. Unbeknownst to Po, he's unintentionally doing the splits he struggled with during formal training. Recognizing the potential in Po, Shurfu decides to take a different approach. He leads Po to the mountaintop, the very spot where Master Ugwe used to conduct Kung Fu training. Aware that traditional methods may not work for Po, Shurfu determines that food is the key to reaching him. Shurfu allows Po to eat, but with a condition, food is only served after completing the day's training. Eager to taste the dumplings, Po throws himself into training. He even attempts some basic kung fu moves to reach the enticing food. Yet, his actions to grab a dumpling from Master Shurfu prove useless. After the rigorous training session, they sit down for lunch. Master Shurfu consumes all the dumplings at once, intentionally leaving one for Po. A fight ensues as Po, fueled by his newfound skills, manages to snatch the last dumpling. Surprisingly, Po then hands it back to Master Shurfu, confessing that his hunger had disappeared. On the other hand, Tai Lung has reached the vicinity of the valley, prompting the Furious Five to gear up for a direct confrontation. While some work on cutting the bridge's rope, Tigress faces Tai Lung head-on with her best kung fu moves. However, as she ends up on the bridge, the other students are compelled to hold the rope to prevent her from falling. Initially, Tigress puts up a tough fight, but Tai Lung's powerful kick sends her crashing into the bridge, breaking it. Tai Lung seizes the opportunity, choking Tigress between the bridge ropes. Viper rushes to her aid. However, amidst the chaos, Tigress falls from the bridge. Crane manages to rescue her. As Monkey and Viper engage Tai Lung, Mantis is left alone to hold the ropes. 
Just before he's about to fall, Tigris and the others manage to cut the bridge in half, sending Tai Lung to the other end. To their astonishment, Tai Lung somehow manages to survive the attack. Appearing right behind them, he subdues all of them and takes control of the situation. Witnessing the dire state of his students after Tai Lung's onslaught, Master Shurfu realizes that Tai Lung has become even stronger, he now believes it's time to entrust the dragon scroll to the dragon warrior. He harnesses his powers to retrieve the sacred scroll, which is suspended in the mouth of the dragon attached to the ceiling. Master Shurfu hands the dragon scroll to Po, expecting him to access its limitless power. However, to everyone's shock, as Po opens the scroll, they discover it to be empty. A stunned Master Shurfu grapples with the reality of the situation. Realizing they can't rely on Po any longer, he issues a directive to the Furious Five to evacuate the valley and protect the people from Tai Lung's impending wrath. Master Shurfu prepares to face Tai Lung alone. As the Furious Five follow Master Shurfu's orders to evacuate the valley, Po joins the citizens in leading with his father. He is distraught at his inability to assist in the fight against Tai Lung. At this time, he receives comfort from Mr. Ping. His father reassures him that his destiny lies in the noodle business that awaits him. Mr. Ping then discloses a long-hidden secret to Po, the supposed secret ingredient of his delicious soup. To Po's shock, there is no special ingredient, the soup's uniqueness stems from believing it is special. Mr. Ping underscores that to make something truly extraordinary, one only needs to believe in its exceptional qualities. This revelation strikes a chord with Po, who suddenly understands the deep message of the seemingly blank dragon scroll. Its reflective page was a mirror, encouraging Po to believe in himself as the source of limitless power. On the other hand, Tai Lung and Master Shurfu meet face to face. Fueled by anger and hatred, Tai Lung delivers a powerful punch to Master Shurfu for Shurfu's perceived betrayal. Tai Lung holds Shurfu accountable for not standing up for him, when Master Ugwe rejected him as the Dragon Warrior. The brutal blow not only inflicts physical pain on Master Shurfu, but also shatters the staff that Master Ugwe had bestowed upon him. With a forceful kick, Tai Lung pushes Master Shurfu into the sky. He executes a final attack, overpowering and subduing his former master. In a moment of vulnerability, Master Shurfu issues an apology to Tai Lung. He acknowledges that his love may have blinded him to see Tai Lung's descent into darkness. Momentarily moved by the apology, he quickly reverts to his ruthless nature, demanding the dragon scroll instead of Shurfu's apology. As Tai Lung's gaze fixates on the dragon figure above, he's shocked to discover the scroll missing. Fueled by rage, he is about to strike a fatal blow to Master Shurfu. At that critical moment, Po enters the palace. Recognizing Po as the dragon warrior, Tai Lung shifts his focus. After falling onto a tree from Tai Lung's attack, Po bides his time, patiently waiting for the moment. When Tai Lung is right in front of the tree, Po skillfully maneuvers away causing the tree to strike Tai Lung and send him tumbling down the stairs. Seizing the advantage, Po uses his considerable weight to crush Tai Lung with each step of the stairs. As Tai Lung closes in on the dragon scroll, Po cleverly hides it under a metal pot, swiftly shuffling the pots around. Undeterred, Tai Lung effortlessly knocks away the pots in a single motion, prompting Po to employ his bamboo legs to obstruct him. Despite Tai Lung managing to grab the scroll, Po once again exploits his weight advantage to crush Tai Lung. After getting up, Tai Lung relentlessly chases the scroll, unaware that Po is hot on his heels with his makeshift rocket chair. In their race to claim the dragon scroll, it mysteriously finds its way into the mouth of a rock dragon. Climbing the mountain to retrieve the scroll, he delivers a powerful kick to Po, sending him tumbling down. Seizing the advantage, Tai Lung performs a body splash, temporarily incapacitating Po. He then successfully reaches the dragon scroll, but is infuriated to find it empty. Fueled by rage, he attempts to use his tough moves on Po. However, to his astonishment, they have no effect on him. Instead, Po only feels a tickle. In an accidental moment, Po strikes Tai Lung with unexpected force, discovering the latent strength within himself. Realizing his newfound power, Po begins to harness his strength, using it to overpower and subdue Tai Lung. As Tai Lung comes in for a punch, Po quickly responds, applying the Wuxi finger technique. This move involves pinching the opponent's index finger and flexing the pinky, unleashing an explosive golden shockwave. Those subjected to this technique find themselves transported to the spirit realm. With a flex of Po's pinky, golden waves emerge, and Tai Lung is sent to the spirit realm. The valley citizens, now safe, return and cheer for Po as their savior. 
Poe embraces his father, while the Furious Five bow in respect just as he dreamed. Poe's joy is interrupted by the realization that Master Shurfu was injured. Luckily, Shurfu was alive and at peace, having entrusted in Poe. Finding solace, they lie together with their eyes closed. Later, they share a meal, a moment Poe cherishes above all. Since that moment, Poe took on the role of the valley's protector, ever present when the community needed him most. However, a day arrives when the valley faces an assault by a wolf army, each soldier bearing a distinct red insignia on their shoulders. The sight triggers a familiar memory in Poe, yet he chooses to keep it to himself. It turns out that Lord Shen, of the Gongmen city, sent the wolves. Long ago, his parents invented fireworks that brought joy and prosperity to the city. But their son, Lord Shen, saw darker power in the fireworks. What had brought color and joy could also bring darkness and destruction. Shen's troubled parents consulted a soothsayer. She foretold that if Shen continued down this dark path, he would be defeated by a warrior of black and white. The young lord overheard the conversation and set out to change his fate. He attacked the city and eliminated all pandas. For his ruthless act, he was banished from the city forever, but Shen swore revenge, saying that someday he would return and all of China would bow before him. He raised his army of wolves and began stealing metal from all over China to work on his weapon, while Lord Shen is diligently working to forge his weapon and assert control over all of China. Po is busy setting a new personal record, holding 38 bean buns in his mouth. A friendly pat on the back from Crane results in a comedic explosion as all the bean buns are pushed out. After enjoying some light-hearted moments with his friends, Po heads to the mountaintop for training with Master Shurfu. There, he discovers his master deep in meditation. Master Shurfu unveils his newfound abilities, achieved through the power of inner peace, demonstrating seemingly impossible feats, like using Tai Chi movements to control a drop of water without breaking it. Shurfu imparts these skills to Po. He advises Po on the importance of finding inner peace, a crucial element for every master. By doing so, one can tap into the flow of the universe and unlock their inner powers. Before they can delve deeper into the discussion, Tigris arrives with urgent news of a wolf attack. The wolves are raiding the valley, targeting metal resources for Shin's factory. Amid the chaos, Po makes a dramatic entrance, leaping off a cliff. Crane swoops to catch him and safely sets him down on the ground giving a perfect landing, the Furious Six join in with their impressive entrance, prompting cheers from the citizens. Enraged by the display, the leader of the wolf pack directs his fury at Poe, initiating a heated confrontation. Poe skillfully dodges the leader's attacks and hurls him into a resonating gong. Monkey utilizes his impressive long jumps to engage the wolves, while Mantis employs his incredible speed to dodge their strikes and his razor-sharp legs to dismantle their metal swords. Simultaneously, the wolves launch an assault on Poe, only to be stopped as he skillfully kicks them aside. Tigress faces a trio of wolves, effortlessly overpowering them with her tough skills. When archers target Poe with arrows, Mantis steps in. He throws metal plates that intercept the arrows, redirecting their trajectory away from Poe. With his newfound kung fu skills, Poe dispatches several wolves. However, the situation intensifies as others hurl axes and give chase. Seeking refuge, Poe climbs a house, only to be overwhelmed when the wolves follow and corner him. In this critical moment, Tigris intervenes, rescuing Poe. The two unite in combat to take down the assaulting wolves. Poe lands back on the ground, prepared to face more adversaries. As Poe continues to defeat the wolf army, their leader grows anxious. To divert attention, he orders his forces to pull away a rope connected to a bundle of pots. Amidst this chaos, a pig gets entangled in one of the pots, suspended in mid-air and at the mercy of the wolves. Leveraging his flying ability, Crane swoops in, cutting the rope just as Poe leaps off the mountain to catch the bundle of metal items. To prevent Poe from falling, Viper secures him with her tail, while Monkey supports Viper, and Tigress holds Monkey. Once again, the Furious Six comes together to save the valley. As Poe relaxes in the praises of the citizens, a wolf stealthily prepares to attack him from behind. When Poe turns around, ready to counter, he's taken aback to see a red sign on the wolf's shoulder. The memories flood back as Poe has the vision of his mother, a panda who had left him in the forest. Distracted by this unexpected connection, Poe is caught off guard as the wolf seizes the opportunity. He strikes him forcefully with a giant hammer. The impact sends Poe tumbling onto a pile of bunnies. The wolves, now in possession of the tied bundle of metal, make a swift escape. It leaves Poe to ponder the significance of the vision that stirred memories of his past. In search of answers about his past, 
Paul makes his way to his home, where Mr. Ping is serving food. Taking his father aside, Po shares the vision that stirred memories of his mother. Curious about his origins, Po directly asks Mr. Ping where he came from. Initially, Mr. Ping tries to divert the conversation by explaining a story about coming from an egg. However, sensing that Po sees through the excuse, he reluctantly confesses that Po was adopted. Opening up further, Mr. Ping reveals the circumstances, finding Po in an empty box of radishes outside the shop. After a prolonged wait for someone to claim the abandoned child, Mr. Ping eventually chose to open his heart and let him in. He bathed and nourished the young Po, tirelessly satisfying his seemingly insatiable appetite. Witnessing Po's innocent tears over a minor inconvenience, he felt a deep connection and chose to adopt him as his son forever. Despite this heartwarming tale, Po still harbors many questions about his identity. Mr. Ping reassures him that despite a less-than-ideal start, he is now living a genuinely happy life. On the other hand, Master Thundering Rhino, Master Storming Ox, and Master Croc are doing their daily practice. They are the Master's Council, the respected protectors of Gongmen City. Everything was going great, until Shen makes an entry into the city, swiftly overpowering the guards and seizing the attention of the Council. He boldly demands their departure from what he claims is rightfully his. Turning to the soothsayer, Shen mocks her foretelling. He asserts that her predictions are not as accurate as believed. However, the soothsayer maintains her unwavering faith, insisting that Shen will meet his downfall at the hands of someone black and white. In his arrogance, Shen demands the return of his city, but the master's council staunchly refuses. They are determined to safeguard the city from his malevolence. When the council rejects his demand, Shen presents them with a gift, a box. However, a fight erupts, with Shen initially overpowering Master Ox and Master Croc. His swift combat techniques allow him to subdue their moves. However, Master Rhino proves to be a tough opponent, showcasing kung fu skills that Shen struggles to match. Faced with this challenge, Shen opens the gift, a huge cannon. In a matter of seconds, he unleashes a flaming cannonball, signaling the beginning of his reign. News of Master Rhino's demise quickly spreads, reaching Master Shurfu's ears through a reliable source. Learning about Shen's formidable weapon that breathes air and spews metal, Master Shurfu becomes convinced that if Shen isn't stopped, it could spell the demise of Kung Fu itself. Faced with the urgent need to neutralize the weapon and bring Shen to justice, Master Shurfu assigns Po the crucial task. Perplexed, Po questions how Kung Fu can counter something that seems to stop Kung Fu itself. Master Shurfu responds with wisdom, stating that anything is possible with inner peace. He emphasizes that discovering inner peace is the key to destroying the weapon and defeating Shen. As Po and his team embark on their journey to Gongmen City, Mr. Ping hands Po a travel pack. It is filled with memories of their shared moments. Anxious for his son's safety, Mr. Ping warns Po of the dangers ahead. He urges him not to go. Po, however, asserts his role as the Dragon Warrior, emphasizing that he must save Kung Fu. Undeterred, the Furious Six set forth on their mission to rescue Gongmen City and protect all of China from Shen's malevolence. The Gongmen City is far away, so they have to journey through the mountains and navigate the snow-covered peaks. As they traverse, Po struggles, slipping and sliding down, while feeling more exhausted than Tigris and the others. While Po hones his kung fu skills in this snowy mountain, Shen is also seen preparing for the upcoming war, focusing on his combat abilities. During a moment of rest, Po experiences another dream about his parents. In the dream, he sees them walking away in a forest. When he tries to follow, they turn around, revealing a baby radish in their arms. Shockingly, they inform Po that they've replaced him with the radish, claiming it can master kung fu better. The radish leaps from their arms and begins showcasing impressive kung fu skills, leaving Po puzzled. The dream takes a bizarre turn with a recurring red sign. Upon waking, Po is left confused and frustrated. He vents his frustration on the boat's mast. When a droplet falls on his head, his anger intensifies. Despite trying to regain inner peace, Po struggles to find calmness. Frustration consumes Po as he relentlessly punches the mast, causing a cascade of water droplets to drench him. Witnessing his struggle, Tigress steps in, offering herself as a formidable opponent. However, when Po throws a punch, it's he who ends up getting hurt. It leaves him surprised by Tigress's seemingly unaffected body. After some casual conversation, Tigress gets straight to the point. She asks Po about the source of his unease. It's then that Po discloses to her the revelation that he is adopted. The team eventually arrives at Gongmen City, where Shen oversees his cannon factory. 
Seizing control of his ancestral home once more, Shin throws away his parents' throne and replaces it with his massive cannon. As Shin continues to ridicule the soothsayer's predictions, she plucks a feather from him and tears a piece of his clothing. It is to glimpse into the future once more. As she mixes ingredients in her bowl, a smoky vision emerges. It once again reveals that Shen will be defeated by a black and white warrior. Furious that his fate remains unchanged despite eliminating pandas from the city, Shen angrily retrieves his metal feather and shatters the bowl. However, his wolf guards soon approach with startling news. A panda has been spotted in the city. In disbelief, Shen orders them to find and arrest the panda. Driven by stubbornness, he remains convinced he can defy the soothsayer's prophecy by eliminating the panda. As Shen plans the arrest of pandas, Po and the rest of the team navigate the city, concealing themselves from the vigilant guards. In order to reach Shen and neutralize his weapon, they must infiltrate his residence discreetly to avoid detection by the guards. Monkey, Tigress, Mantis, Viper, and Crane opt for a rooftop approach leaping from one building to another with quick precision. Meanwhile, Poe takes a more unconventional route. He sneaks through the bustling market, using oversized plant pots as makeshift cover. Along the way, he grabs a quick bite of noodles and disguises himself with a kite shield over his face. When a wolf approaches, Poe conceals his identity with a hand fan, pretending as a female. However, when the wolf grows suspicious, Poe swiftly headbutts him, drawing the attention of the rest of the Furious Five. In a bid to blend in, Poe slips under a dragon costume, hoping to avoid attracting further attention. However, a mishap occurs when he accidentally collides with a fireworks cart, setting it ablaze. Tigris and the others swiftly join Poe inside the dragon costume to extract him from the chaos. While inside, Poe witnesses a wolf mistreating a goat, prompting him to engulf the wolf. The others unleash a vigorous beating on the wolf before ejecting him from the dragon. Maintaining the dragon disguise, Poe uses it to intimidate the old goat. He creates the illusion that the dragon is eating her. However, Poe's motive is to extract information about the Master's Council. The goat reveals that Master Ox and Master Croc are imprisoned in Gongmen Jail. Realizing their potential aid in destroying Shen's weapon, Poe resolves to seek their assistance. Before they can depart, the wolves catch wind of their presence, initiating a pursuit with the intent to apprehend the six kung fu heroes. The chase ensues, with the wolves hot on the heels of the heroes. Using the dragon as cover, they employ its tail to kick a cart, toppling two wolves in their pursuit. Despite their efforts, the wolves persistently hinder their progress. Faced with no alternative, the heroes choose to engulfing the wolves and forcefully ejecting them from the dragon. In the chaos, a funny, accidental mishap occurs, and Monkey is unintentionally expelled from the dragon. The six heroes dash away from the pursuing wolves until they find themselves cornered. As the wolves thrust their swords into the dragon, they are astonished to discover not the kung fu heroes but a stash of fruits beneath the costume. Unbeknownst to the wolves, the team had cleverly abandoned the dragon, they hid themselves under barrels. As always, Poe is left behind due to his weight. Mantis comes to his aid and facilitates their escape. Eventually, the team successfully reaches the jail. Strategically, they toss Mantis' barrel near the guards, catching them off guard. Seizing the opportunity, Mantis swiftly emerges from the barrel and takes down the two guards in seconds, eliminating each obstacle in their path. The team successfully infiltrates the jail, where Master Croc and Master Ox are confined. Eager to liberate the city alongside the two masters, Poe forcefully breaks open their cell door. However, to everyone's surprise, Master Croc and Master Ox are hesitant to leave. They reveal that challenging Shen directly would provoke him to unleash the weapon on the city. In order to safeguard the citizens, they reluctantly agreed to stay in jail as per Shen's conditions. Master Ox firmly shuts the jail door, emphasizing that they cannot risk the safety of the city. Not fully grasping the gravity of the situation, Poe insists on confronting Shen head on. Master Ox and Master Croc firmly resist Poe's attempts to forcefully free them. Despite the destruction of the cell door in their scuffle, the masters calmly walk into the opposite cell, sealing themselves inside. Ox declares that Kung Fu is dead, leaving Poe and the Furious Five in shock. Enraged, Poe scolds the masters and instructs them to stay in their cell in shame. The situation takes a turn when Boss Wolf and his soldiers arrive at the jail. Crane and Monkey successfully subdue two wolves but the boss wolf manages to escape. The five, along with Poe, embark on a chase after him. Opting for a rickshaw, Poe pursues the boss wolf. In an attempt to hinder Poe, the wolf throws the old goat in his path, causing Poe to swerve and change lanes. 
During the chase, the citizens are inadvertently affected. However, Tigris intervenes, ensuring their safety. The pursuit goes smoothly until a group of bunnies collides with Poe's face, causing his rickshaw to careen onto an under-construction bridge. To avoid a fall, Poe abruptly applies the brakes, pushing the rickshaw onto a nearby house roof. The sudden stop catapults Poe into the air, but he skillfully lands between two ropes still attached to the rickshaw. Crane swoops in to rescue the bunnies, leaving Poe with only one wheel on the rickshaw. In a bid to facilitate Poe's pursuit of Boss Wolf, Tigris propels him forward. It causes the tire to catch fire due to friction. Poe manages to catch up to Boss Wolf. However, their chase leads them straight to Shen's palace, where a horde of wolves surrounds them. Realizing the odds, Poe surrenders. He and the Furious Five find themselves in cuffs. Meanwhile, Shen practices how to confront Poe with grace. However, the soothsayer senses his underlying fear. Despite her suspicions, Shen adamantly denies any worry or fear. As Poe and the Furious Five are escorted to Shen's residence, the Wolf Army reveals the site where Master Rhino met his demise. The place displays his long hammer embedded in the ground. For Poe, it is not something to fear, but this site serves as a source of inspiration. Meanwhile, Shen anxiously awaits Poe's arrival. He is visibly tense. Upon Poe's entry, the soothsayer regards him with a sense of hope and anticipation. Poe remains vigilant, scanning the area for the weapon. Spotting what appears to be a miniature cannon on a table, he mistakes it for the actual weapon. He promptly destroys it with a sparrow kick, believing the mission to be accomplished. Filled with a momentary sense of triumph, Poe celebrates. His happiness is cut short when he discovers the genuine weapon, realizing the gravity of the situation. Shen continues taunting Poe, seemingly referring to his failure in plotting revenge against him. Assuming that Shen is referring to Mr. Rhino's vengeance, Poe remains unaware of the deeper truth known to Shen and the soothsayer. A growing sense of unease envelopes Poe, as he begins to suspect that there's something crucial he doesn't know. Despite his inquiries, Shen remains tight-lipped and orders Boss Wolf to fire the cannon at Poe and the Furious Five. To their surprise, when Boss Wolf attempts to light the fuse, it quickly gets diffused. It is revealed that Mantis had managed to escape capture. The Mantis in the cage is nothing more than a decoy. Simultaneously, Viper assists Tigress in freeing herself from her cuffs. In a swift and coordinated effort, the team members liberate themselves from the cuffs. They overpower every guard surrounding them, revealing their true capabilities to Shun. Seizing the opportunity, Tigris launches the giant cannon into the air. Mantis applies force to bring it crashing down. The cannon smashes through the floor, destroying everything in its path. With the chaos unfolding, Poe seizes the chance to catch Shen off guard, knocking him down. Amid the confrontation, Poe once again witnesses the red sign in Shen's feather. It triggers memories of his parents. This time, he envisions Shen present in the chaos during that traumatic moment. The realization hits Poe. Shen was there when he last saw his parents. With a sinister smile, Shen admits to his presence. Taking advantage of Poe's vulnerability, Shen takes flight to another building with many cannons. It becomes clear that the cannon destroyed by the five was not the only one. Shen orders an attack, and Poe becomes a victim of the onslaught. When he is on the edge of a hole, the five attempts to help him. However, despite their efforts, Poe ultimately falls. As Shen commands another assault, the building is bombarded by cannonballs, causing chaos and destruction. Sensing the urgency, Tigris swiftly exits the crumbling structure. She understands that their only escape is to ascend with the collapsing building. Amidst the destruction, Tigris and Poe unite forces. They maneuver their way upward through the crumbling structure. Reaching the peak, they take a leap and launch themselves away from the chaos and Shin's army. On the other side, Shin declares his attack on Gongmen City, instructing his army to prepare. Meanwhile, Poe and the Furious Five skillfully evade the wolves, finding refuge in the prison to gather their thoughts. Inside, Tigris questions Poe about his decision not to eliminate Shen when he had the opportunity. As Poe doesn't respond, Tigris commands him to stay confined while they confront Shen. A fight ensues between Tigris and Poe, leading to Poe finally revealing that Shen was present when he last saw his parents. Poe suspects Shen holds the answers to the questions about his identity. Touched by the painful revelation, Tigris embraces Poe. She offers solace and explains that her earlier distress was due to the fear of losing a friend. As Poe remains troubled, the five decide to take on Shin themselves. 
On the contrary, Shen ridicules the soothsayers' predictions. He dismisses Po, their supposed savior, as a mere foolish panda. Undeterred, the soothsayer is confident in Po's ability to defeat him. Meanwhile, Tigris and the rest of the Furious Five head to Shen's factory with the plan to ignite powder kegs and destroy the factory. On another front, Po reaches the hill and cleverly catapults himself into the factory using a large bamboo. Taking down two wolves, he uses their bodies as a shield to navigate past the remaining security. The ape catches the two wolves, but Po successfully infiltrates the factory. Spotting Shen on the wooden bridge, Po confronts him, seeking answers about his identity. To inflict pain on Po, Shen claims to have been present when his parents abandoned him. With those words, he cuts the chain holding a molten metal pot, leaving Po dangling over it. Meanwhile, the Furious Five enter the factory with the lit powder kegs. However, upon witnessing Po inside the factory, they extinguish the fire to prevent an explosion. While the five fend off the wolf army, Po confronts Shen. As he gears up for a kick, Shen stops his move and tosses him onto a conveyor that throws metal pots into the molten mixture. Seeing Po in danger, the five rush to his aid. As Po is on the edge of falling into the molten metal, he uses a magnetic tunic fork to cling onto the conveyor. Seizing the opportunity, he surprises Shun, launching an attack from behind. While Tigris grapples with the ape, Po faces off against Shen. Shen skillfully evades his strikes in an attempt to escape. However, Po catches him, trapping Shen's head within the tuning fork. Shen frees himself and manipulates Po emotionally, claiming his parents didn't love him. Taking advantage of Po's shock, he fires a cannon at him. The attack throws Po out of the factory and into a nearby river. Tigris tries but fails to rescue him. Meanwhile, Master Shurfu feels Po's pain. Unconscious and badly wounded, Po drifts in the river until the soothsayer finds and tends to his injuries. She uses the acupuncture technique to speed up his recovery. Po attempts to flee, suspecting the soothsayer is one of Shen's followers. However, he quickly discovers she's actually his rescuer. She then unfolds the tale of a village near Gongmen inhabited by pandas. She recounts Shen's greed-driven assault on the village after she foretold his defeat by a warrior of white and black. As Po surveys the village, a flood of memories rushes back to him. In a revelation, Po finally grasps that his parents hadn't abandoned him. They had risked everything to save him. His mother hid him in a crate of radishes, diverting Shen and the wolves. She sacrificed herself to save her child. With this newfound understanding of his identity, Po attains inner peace. Using raindrops, he replicates the water drop technique Shurfu had shown him. Strengthened by inner peace, he becomes more formidable than ever, ready to confront Shen. On the other hand, the five find themselves securely bound to the flagship of Shen's cannon-equipped ships. It is navigating down the river toward the harbor. When a bridge obstructs their path, Shen commands its destruction. Feeling helpless, Tigris attempts to free herself but struggles in vain. Suddenly, Po appears before Shen, demanding the release of the five. Frustrated by Po's survival, Shen faces him with hatred. Po delivers a heartfelt speech, preparing to free the five with his hat. However, when he attempts to swiftly cut their chains, his hat falls slowly. It leaves Po embarrassed by the failed move. Shen seizes the opportunity, ordering his army to launch a cannon attack. Evading the wolves' aim, Po keeps moving, making it hard for them to target him. Continuing his approach, Po leaps onto the ship. It causes chaos as wolves scramble to avoid becoming cannon targets. Amidst the chaos, Po engages the wolves in combat, while the five manage to free themselves from their chains. United, they stand against Chen's plans to destroy Gongmen City and the entirety of China. In a strategic move, Po hurls a wolf, and Viper and Tigress skillfully employ it as a shield to approach Shen. Meanwhile, Po finds reinforcements in Master Ox and Master Croc, who reveal that Po's friends convinced them to break out of jail and aid in the battle against Chen. To everyone's surprise, the friend turns out to be Master Shurfu, arriving to assist Po in defeating Chen. Acting swiftly, Master Shurfu directs Po to use Chen's own boats to block his escape route. With a coordinated effort, Po brings the ships together. Gaining momentum, he causes a collision near the harbor. The five, Master Shurfu, Po, and the Master's Council make a triumphant entrance, stopping Shen's escape. They engage in a fierce battle against the wolves to reach Shen. As they close in, Shen commands the boss wolf to fire. However, the boss wolf realizes the potential harm to their own army, so he refuses to obey. Enraged, Shen hurls his ninja star at the boss wolf and takes charge of firing the cannon. Just as Shen aims the cannonball at Po, 
Tigress sacrifices herself. She pushes Po away to save him. The resulting explosion throws everyone into the water, with Tigress sustaining more severe injuries than the rest. The once blocked path is now open, and Shen and his army proceed down the river, witnessing his friends injured and Shen enjoying their suffering. Po's anger reaches its boiling point. With inner peace achieved, he initiates the water droplet technique. When Shen fires a cannonball at him, Po catches it effortlessly. He treats it like a water droplet and tosses it away like a ball. Though his hand catches fire, Po swiftly extinguishes it by putting his hand in his mouth. Enraged by Po's boldness, Shen orders more cannon fire. However, Po effortlessly dodges the fiery cannonballs and redirects them. As Shen persists in firing, Po turns the attack against them. He hurls the cannonballs back at the enemy ships. With each ship getting demolished, the citizens praise Po's skill and bravery. As Po persists in stopping the cannonballs, Shen grows increasingly frustrated. When Shen fires yet again, Po seizes the ball. He spins it faster and directs it to collide with Shen's flagship, causing its destruction. Witnessing his impending defeat, Shen is shocked by the turn of events. Curious, he asks Po how he attained inner peace and grew stronger. In response, Po advises Shen to let go of his past for a chance at peace. Po encourages him to choose a new path. Unwilling to accept defeat, Shen rejects Po's offer and launches his final attack. Firing his metal feathers, Shen attempts to strike Po. However, Po skillfully dodges each assault. The battle between the two continues as Shen refuses to surrender. Amid the battle, the ship's mast collapses. Po narrowly escapes, but Shen succumbs to the falling mast, leading to his demise. As Po is about to make his getaway, Tigris lends a helping hand. Relieved to see his friend unharmed, Po embraces Tigris, surprising everyone. Master Shurfu praises Po for attaining inner peace at such a young age. When Po attempts to hug him in return, Master Shurfu moves with lightning speed, skillfully evading the embrace. The fireworks from Shen's ship burst into the sky, marking the end of Shen's malevolence and the start of a new beginning. Meanwhile, a customer argues with Mr. Ping, because it's her son's birthday, and he wants to meet the dragon warrior. Po's unexpected arrival surprises everyone. As Mr. Ping warmly embraces Po, he shares the story of discovering the village where he was born, and the events that led him to end up in the radish basket. Despite learning about his origins, Po proudly declares Mr. Ping his dad. Having found inner peace, Po realizes he belongs where he is, with Mr. Ping, who raised him as a true father. With his newfound powers, Po tirelessly works alongside the five, safeguarding the people of China. Unbeknownst to him, a new challenge lurks on the horizon. Unknown to many, Master Ugwe didn't pass away. He retired to the spirit world. He is living in tranquility until his peace is disrupted when a jade sword swiftly approaches. With agility and precision, he stops the attack. Another jade sword follows, and Ugwe redirects the first, stopping the assault. These weapons are owned by Kai, an old enemy of Master Ugwe. After 500 years in the spirit world, Kai returns with formidable chi powers, a spiritual energy present in all living things. He advances toward Ugwe, demolishing obstacles in his path. As Kai displays his immense power, Master Ugwe readies himself for a counterattack. It's revealed that Kai has absorbed the chi of many kung fu masters in the spirit world, and now seeks Master Ugwe's chi to return to the mortal realm. Master Ugwe unleashes a powerful attack with his golden power, but Kai skillfully counters it. He uses two colossal rocks to subdue Ugwe's force. Following the clash of these formidable forces, Kai successfully captures Master Ugwe. Utilizing the chain of his jade swords, Kai wraps it around Ugwe and pulls the turtle closer, aiming to steal his chi. In a moment of realization, Ugwe acknowledges his inability to defeat Kai and willingly surrenders. It allows Kai to absorb his chi. Having gathered enough chi, Kai drives his fist into the rock, facilitating his return to the mortal world. On the other hand, Po is engrossed in practicing perfect entries with his friends. Having emerged victorious in the battle against Shen, his popularity has increased. Excited citizens eagerly wait for him, hoping to shake hands. However, Po's speed is so swift that it sets their hands on fire. Po shares his insights with his friends, emphasizing the importance of a dramatic entrance. As he gears up to kick a door, Master Shurfu unexpectedly opens it, demonstrating how to make the perfect entrance. Master Shurfu kicks the doors and leaps in. The geese illuminate the room, casting a warm glow. Master Shurfu unveils the reason behind this special entry. Today marks his last class. From now on, Po will be their new master, 
Everyone is taken aback by the revelation, especially Po, who doubts his ability to instruct the already skilled five in Kung Fu. Despite his reservations, being the dragon warrior forces him to take on the role. After announcing his decision, Master Shurfu orchestrates a flawless exit. He instructs Po to see on the other side. In the blink of an eye, he slips away from the room, leaving Po in astonishment. When Po turns back, he finds the five bowing before him. They have accepted him as their master. Encouraged by their plea to give it a shot, Po starts their training. However, his methods result in more injuries than progress. After a brief training session, Crane gets his head stuck in a gong, Viper becomes entangled in a prop, and Tigress sustains severe injuries. Po feels disheartened after the day's unsuccessful training session. To add to his disappointment, some geese mock him, spreading the word about his seemingly useless training throughout the valley. Disappointed, Po apologizes to Wu Wei's statue, expressing his failure to become a true dragon warrior. Master Shurfu joins Po, and reveals that he foresaw Po's failure. Confused, Po questions why Master Shurfu allowed him to fail if he knew it would happen. In response, Master Shurfu imparts a valuable lesson, stating that if one only does what they can already do, they'll never surpass their current limitations. Master Shurfu enlightens Po, making him realize that being the dragon warrior demands more than just casually strolling through the market and exchanging high fives with the bunnies. Po was chosen for a purpose far more profound, demonstrating his newfound powers. Master Shurfu shows Po how to make a flower bloom. When questioned, Master Shurfu identifies this power as Qi, the energy that courses through all living things. According to Master Shurfu, mastery of Qi requires mastery of self. In Po's case, he must become proficient in teaching to unlock the use of Qi. Master Shurfu believes that Master Uwe selected Po for a reason, urging him to transcend his limits and reveal his inner self. Despite the encouragement, Po remains uncertain about his ability to accomplish this task. In a twist unknown to Po, the danger has arrived in the mortal realm. Kai has successfully traversed into this world. When two field workers approach the gaping hole created by Kai's arrival, they are taken aback to find the formidable Kai standing before them. Attempting to flee, they are blocked by Kai's jade swords. Curiously, Kai questions whether stepping on them would result in their demise. As they confirm this, Kai realizes he has indeed reached the mortal world. Kai attempts to introduce himself, but is frustrated when he notices that the field workers do not recognize him despite their knowledge of Master Ugwe. They fail to recall Kai's association with Ugwe. Driven by anger, Kai summons his jade monsters, kung fu masters whose chi he had stolen. He commands them to seek out Ugwe's students and bring them to him. Meanwhile, Po is feeling down about his failure to become a teacher. While chatting with his father, he mistakenly puts red chili on himself instead of bath salt giving him quite a burn. He starts sharing his worries about being a teacher and whether he's still the dragon warrior. But Mr. Ping only catches the first part and gets excited, thinking it could help their franchise grow. Suddenly, a pig bursts in, shouting about someone beating Poe's dumpling eating record. Poe heads to the restaurant to check it out, and finds another panda as the challenger, surprising him. This panda, named Li Shan, claims he's searching for his son. Initially slow to catch on, both pandas finally realize their relationship amidst gasps from the crowd. They share a warm embrace. Despite Mr. Ping's attempts to cast doubt on Li being Po's biological father, the pandas pay no mind. Po starts learning the belly gong technique from Li, while they share fun moments, even capturing a picture together. However, Mr. Ping, still suspicious, ruins their picture, unconvinced about the situation. Li discloses that there are a bunch of pandas living in a secret mountain village. Po is thrilled to learn that there are more like him, and asks Li how he found out about his whereabouts. Li replies that he received a message, sparking Mr. Ping's suspicion. Mr. Ping questions how Li managed to get a message if the village is hidden. That's when Li reveals that he got a message from the universe. Curious about Po being the dragon warrior, Li inquires. Po excitedly mentions having a lot to share. Po takes Li to visit the Jade Palace, leaving Mr. Ping behind, anxiously concerned about being replaced by Po's real father. While at the Jade Palace, Po gives Li a tour, showcasing the sights. When Li decides to try on Master Rhino's antique armor, Po starts to freak out. He advises Li to take it off, emphasizing that they're not supposed to touch these valuable antiques. Despite the warning, Li pulls a string on the armor, causing it to upgrade and expand fully. Given Po's existing admiration for Kung Fu and the Masters, he can't help but be captivated by the remarkable armor. Taking notice of Po's interest, 
Lee suggests testing out other antiques as well. The duo enjoys some playful moments in the Jade Palace, before being stumbled upon by Shurfu and the Furious Five. Once Lee is identified as Poe's father, they show respect and introduce themselves. However, their introductions are abruptly cut short by the sound of a bell, signaling an attack on the valley by strange jade monsters. The Five and Poe engage in a battle against these jade creatures, quickly nicknamed Jombies by Poe and Monkey. Poe recognizes the attackers as Master's Badger Twins and Porcupine, believed to be deceased. The fight moves to the noodle shop floor, where Mr. Ping is still frustrated by Lee's return. In an attempt to defeat a Jombie, Poe requests a pan but ends up with a small ladle. Despite the mismatched tool, he uses it until the ladle breaks. When a Jombie cuts Poe's poster, Lee expresses concern for his son. As the battle unfolds, Poe employs his Dumplings of Doom technique, enabling him and his friends to subdue the Jombies. An ominous voice comes from the creatures, identifying itself as Kai and threatening the friends to take their chi. The Jombies then transform into jade statuettes and fly off. Following the Jombies' assault, Master Shurfu was on a quest for answers within his library. Eventually, he stumbles upon a scroll containing crucial information about Kai and his chi. As they unroll the parchment, they delve into the story narrated by Master Ugwe. In the scroll, Master Ugwe revealed their deep friendship with Kai, almost like brothers. One day, an ambush left Ugwe badly wounded. Kai carried him for days in search of help, until they discovered a secret village of pandas high in the mountains. The pandas used chi to heal Ugwe, and taught him to give chi to others. However, Kai desired the power for himself, leading to a conflict. Ugwe had to confront him. Their epic battle shook the earth, until Ugwe banished Kai to the spirit realm. The scroll mentions that only a true chi master can stop Kai. Po believes in Master Shurfu's ability, but Shurfu admits he's just a beginner. Witnessing everyone's distress, Lee steps forward. He asserts that he can teach Po about chi. However, it comes with a condition, Po must accompany him to the secret village to reconnect with his panda roots. Moving quickly, the pair begins their journey to the secret village. Meanwhile, Master Shurfu instructs Crane and Mantis to track the Jombie's path and locate Kai. However, he warns them against fighting Kai, as he can absorb their chi as well. On the other hand, Po discovers Mr. Ping tucked away in his backpack. When questioned, Mr. Ping admits he's tagging along, because he was worried about whether Po would find his favorite food in the panda village. Despite the rule against sharing the village's secret, Lee decides to bring him along anyway. Soon, they arrive at the icy mountain where the village is. To skip climbing stairs, the pandas have installed a lift to transport them to the top. Upon reaching the summit, Poe is captivated by the sight of a stunning village full of pandas. Among them are pandas of all ages, young, elderly, and children. They warmly welcome Poe, adorning him with a garland made of dumplings. In mere moments, the surrounding pandas devour all the dumplings. Some embrace him tightly, while the mischievous little pandas swiftly take his figurines of the five. Initially confused, Poe gradually adapts to their playful antics. He's thrilled to join in and spend time with them. However, contrary to his expectations, the pandas don't walk. They roll from one place to another. Poe tries to imitate their movements, but ends up colliding with stones, trees, and, finally, the dining table. Even the kids are confused by how a panda doesn't know how to roll. When Mr. Ping hands Poe chopsticks to pick up a dumpling, the kids wonder if he eats just one at a time. Unlike Poe, they effortlessly handle two or more dumplings. Always eager to eat more and avoid stares, Poe finds himself embracing the panda way of living. During lunch, the pandas treat him to a dance performance by Mei Mei. She's energetic, confident, and wholly devoted to her ribbon dance. Mei Mei locks eyes with Poe, who feels incredibly nervous and awkward under such attention. She envelopes him in her ribbons, handling him like a puppet to offer her flowers and kiss her paw. Despite Poe's hesitance, Mei Mei persists in engaging with him. She eagerly invites Poe to dance. However, when he fails, she assists him by lifting him up and wrapping him in ribbons. Meanwhile, Crane and Mantis track the Jombies' trail and encounter masters in the desert. These masters reveal that the Jombies attack their villages and might be hiding in a shipwreck. Determined to eliminate the threat, the masters head inside the wreck, with Mantis following closely. Against Master Shurfu's advice, Crane joins them, only to confront Kai. As Crane attempts to fight Kai, He's shocked to witness that Kai has absorbed Mantis's chi. Now, it's Crane's turn. A fierce battle ensues between the two, ending in Kai capturing Crane. Meanwhile, Poe is thoroughly enjoying himself. He rises early to practice chi, 
but his father insists he goes back to sleep. Since pandas are known for waking up late, a dream come true for Po. He complies, goes back to sleep, and wakes up later. Lee takes Po on a village tour, where jumping, falling, and rolling are the norm. While showing Po the panda way of life, Lee continually delays the promised lessons. Meanwhile, Mr. Ping finds himself dealing with challenges as his kitchen is overrun by baby pandas. They play with knives, and, upon spotting Mr. Ping, they decide to play with him too. Despite the chaos, Mr. Ping adores these kids, seeing them as reminiscent of Po's childhood. As Po continues exploring the village, he accidentally falls onto Mei Mei and gets entangled in her ribbons. Embracing the panda way, Po feels immense happiness acting like a genuine panda. At the day's end, Po expresses gratitude to his father for allowing him to experience life as a panda once more. Lee then takes him inside, revealing a picture of Po's mother. He shares how their lives became happier when Po was born, and the painful decision to abandon him for his own safety. Po reassures his father that he doesn't need to worry about losing him again. The two share a heartfelt embrace, and their moment is interrupted by the arrival of another panda, Big Fun, who warmly hugs everyone despite being a stranger. Meanwhile, a grim situation unfolds in China, where every master has mysteriously disappeared. It becomes clear that Kai has absorbed their chi, leaving only Shifu and his students as the last line of defense for the knowledge entrusted to them by Ugwe. As Shifu and the others worry over the fate of Crane and Mantis, the duo appears in the sky. However, as they draw closer, a chilling revelation unfolds. They have been transformed into zombies. Kai emerges, spewing false accusations against Master Ugwe. Despite being the one who strayed, Kai accuses Ugwe of betrayal, and vows to destroy everything Ugwe built. As he prepares to strike, Master Shurfu and Monkey step up to stop him. A fierce battle erupts, each side striving to overpower the other. Tigris delivers a mighty kick at Kai, yet he withstands the blow. Meanwhile, the zombies of Mantis and Crane join Kai in repelling Master Shurfu's advances. While Shurfu faces off against Kai, Monkey grapples with Mantis. Despite Mantis's small size, he manages to toss Monkey around, making it a struggle for Monkey to restrain him. In the midst of the chaos, Master Shurfu skillfully avoids Kai's strikes with the Jade Sword. Seizing an opportunity, Shurfu maneuvers onto the sword's chain, aiming to close in on Kai. However, when he spots Master Uwe's Jade Statue around Kai's neck, he loses focus. It allows Kai to overpower and knock him down. Monkey and Viper succumb to losing their chi to Kai's relentless attacks. Sensing the imminent danger, Tigris prepares to engage. However, Master Shurfu intervenes, urging her to survive Kai's assault, so that she can inform Po of the unfolding situation. As Tigris hides, Kai uses his chains to fling Master Uwe's statue at the training hall, shattering it. Witnessing the destruction of his master's temple leaves Master Shurfu in shock. Taking advantage of his vulnerability, Kai steals his chi in a moment of urgency. Tigris grabs the scroll and escapes. Amidst the joyful moments in the village, Po dances and revels in the happiness of the kids. He attempts to channel Chi to bloom a flower but finds himself unable to do so. Soon, Tigris arrives, delivering the grim news of Kai's assault on the Jade Palace. She further tells Po that Kai is now on his way to the village to eliminate all pandas. Realizing the threat, Po urges his father to teach him Chi however, Mr. Lee dodges the request, repeatedly claiming that Po isn't prepared and needs more time. Despite Po's persistence, Lee continues to sidestep the questions, until he finally admits that they don't know how to use Chi anymore. It's been centuries since pandas were skillful at manipulating Chi. Po feels hurt to learn that his father had lied to him, expressing his disappointment that Lee has once again lost his son. Despite Mr. Ping's advice to escape, Po remains resolute about facing Kai in the village. He breaks some bamboo, and fashions a dummy resembling Kai, vigorously practicing his moves. Observing Po's intense determination and anger, Mr. Ping decides to confront Lee. He finally realizes that having Lee in Po's life doesn't mean less for him. It means more for Po. Understanding Po was going through a tough time, Mr. Ping recognizes the need for both of them, as dads, to support Po in this challenging situation. As Po continues practicing, Tigris approaches him. She makes him realize that directly confronting Kai won't suffice. Po mentions that he only needs to execute the Wuxi finger hold on Kai to send him back to the spirit realm. However, Tigris expresses her concern about Kai having an army of jade warriors, making it impossible to sneak up on him. In this critical moment, Lee steps in and proposes a different approach to create their own army, an army of pandas. 
he suggests that they can learn to be Po. Po then comprehends the lesson Shurfu had tried to impart. It's not about creating duplicates of oneself but helping others become their best versions. Realizing this, Po begins teaching the pandas to embrace Kung Fu in their unique ways. He nurtures them to become warriors in their own right. As the kids practice their Ki Pai Uppy game, others engage in rolling down the cliff. While Big Fun clings to a tree, Mei Mei practices with her ribbon, eventually swapping it for a weapon. Po continues to instruct and guide them, emphasizing the importance of becoming the best versions of themselves. With each passing moment, the pandas grow stronger, preparing themselves to face Kai's army of zombies. As night falls, Po outlines the plan, with Cookie and the dumpling team positioned near the entrance. Amid the chaos, the pandas find a moment of humor, when the children eat all the food intended to symbolize the teams. It provides a much-needed laugh amid their preparations. After explaining the plan, Po settles down to review the scroll once again. Observing the pandas giving Master Uwei Chi, Lee attempts to replicate their move. Before they can delve further into the discussion, they hear Kai's approaching footsteps. Kai soon arrives at the village, frustrated by Po's seemingly non-serious behavior. In a fit of anger, he hurls his zombies, including Master Shurfu, into the valley. As the zombies wreak havoc in the village, an army of pandas confronts them. Utilizing their day-to-day -day activities as powerful moves, the pandas give the zombies a tough time. Amid the chaos, Po takes on some jade warriors, while Big Fun and Mei Mei skillfully subdue their respective zombies. Simultaneously, Tigress uses her extraordinary moves to face the zombies head-on. Amid the chaos, the kids play their part by engaging in Ki Pai Uppy with fireworks. Meanwhile, Master Shurfu's Jade Warrior relentlessly pursues Po. However, Po skillfully evades the attacks to prevent harming his master. Master Shurfu's advance is thwarted by the duo, Mr. Ping and Lee, who have fashioned armor for the fight. While all the Jade Warriors are occupied with Po's army, Po seizes the opportunity to approach Kai from behind and attempts to do the Wuxi finger hold. To Po's dismay, the hold proves ineffective against Kai. It turns out that the Wuxi finger hold only works on mortals, and Kai is a spirit warrior. Kai calls back his zombies. With their combined force, he launches a relentless attack on Po. He hurls Po into the sky and delivers a powerful kick, leaving the villagers deeply concerned for Po's well-being. The pandas face the grim realization that their end might be near. In a moment of inspiration, Po formulates a plan. Aware that Kai can't be sent to the spirit realm but a mortal can, he distracts Kai and seizes the opportunity to execute the Wuxi finger hold. By enveloping Kai around his arm, Po successfully transports both of them to the spirit realm. Mr. Lee and Ping rush forward to find Po, but all they discover are the magical leaves of the peach tree. While they are worried about Po's fate, Po finds himself in the spirit realm with Kai. Enraged at being in the spirit world again, Kai unleashes his fury by striking Po with a giant rock and capturing him with his chains. As Kai begins draining Po's chi, the once glowing leaves lose their luster. Realizing the imminent danger Po faces, Lee attempts the chi move. With unwavering faith, the pandas join forces, their paws glowing as they channel chi. The prints of their paws break the force Kai is exerting on Pa resisting the attempt to drain his chi. With the collective power of his people, Po taps into an unlimited source of energy. He unlocks his true potential. This newfound chi mastery pushes Po into a form that overwhelms Kai, knocking him aside. Now, in his true potential form, Po uses his advanced chi skills to create a dragon through spells. Initially, Po has some fun with the dragon, making it perform entertaining moves. When Kai launches an attack, the dragon skillfully holds his swords, turning the tables and making Kai do a belly gong. With a swift move of the dragon's tail, Po kicks Kai away. Taking control of Kai's sword, Po binds it with the dragon's power. He then entangles Kai with his own chain, dragging him into the spirit realm and hurling him into giant rocks. Defeated and enraged, Kai attempts to retaliate. However, Po gathers his power and sends the chi dragon into Kai. Initially thrilled by the influx of power, Kai soon realizes it's too overwhelming to control. The jade statues begin leaving his body and return to the mortal world. All the captured masters, including Mantis, are now free, with Mantis immediately becoming a plaything for a young panda. The threat of Kai is finally neutralized. As the villagers and Poe's family and friends realize Poe hasn't returned to the mortal world, concern grows. Unconscious after the battle, Poe is awakened by the presence of Ugwe. He praises Poe for his growth and maturity. Ugwe reveals that he was the one who informed Lee through the universe mail. 
Furthermore, Ugwe discloses the reason behind choosing Po as the Dragon Warrior. When he first laid eyes on Po, he foresaw the future of Kung Fu embodied within him, similar to the pandas who taught Ugwe Chi in the past. Po represents the perfect harmony of Yin Yang and serves as Ugwe's true successor. Ugwe then presents Po with a Yin Yang staff. Po initially hesitates to accept it, but when Ugwe insists, he keeps the staff. After engaging in a spirited fencing session with his new staff, Po inquires about what will happen next. In response, Master Ugwe appears to vanish in a cloud of petals, causing a momentary panic for Po. However, he soon realizes that Ugwe hasn't gone anywhere, he is already home. In a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, Ugwe informs Po that he can decide whether or not to return to the mortal realm. Empowered by this choice, Po uses his Qi mastery to rejoin the mortal realm. Reappearing successfully, Po is warmly embraced by his fathers and fellow masters. As he greets Master Shurfu, the latter expresses pride in witnessing the student becoming the teacher. Shurfu's attention is then drawn to Po's new staff. Po shares the origin of the staff with Shurfu, mentioning that it was a gift from Wu Wei himself. In a playful turn of events, Master Shurfu requests Po to teach him Qi, recognizing Po's newfound mastery. Reunited with his extended family, Po returns to the Valley of Peace. There, they continue practicing Qi. Mr. Ping's dream also comes true as he successfully upgrades his noodle franchise. Harmony and tranquility settle over the valley as everyone finds peace. United, they perform the Qi move. The golden power emanating from their collective Qi blooms the flowers in the Valley of Peace. The blossoming landscape reflects the inner peace and balance achieved by Po and his community, a testament to the enduring power of unity and self-discovery.